Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Acuity blog session. I'm your host again, Brian Garcia from Acuity Solutions. And uh, today's topic is NXCAD importing files into Team Center. Um, in previous sessions, we've kind of covered this briefly, but uh, in NX 10 and 11, there's been a lot of information and a lot of new improvements that have been put into the interface for importing into Team Center. And uh, we're going to go over those today. And I'm going to highlight some of the things that I've been kind of looking at and learning about. So let's get right into it. So what you're looking at here is a just a, a folder with some NX files in it. And uh, basically, I was, you know, looking for an assembly. You know, the situation may be that you're actually, you know, you've got all this NX data that you've been sitting on for, you know, months or years, and now you've got your new Team Center installation, and you're looking at bringing some of these assemblies or projects in kind of one by one. So to start out with, what I did is I used the cloning utility inside of NX first to kind of get this situation. A lot of times, you know, assemblies in parts in an assembly could be scattered up amongst different folders. And so a lot of times how I kind of wrap my head around it and kind of understand and looking at other people's data is I'll, I'll do a clone of an assembly and I'll import or actually export it into one folder. So everything that's, that makes up that assembly is in one folder. And that's what we're looking at here. On top of it, in the cloning utility, which I can review with you at another time if you're interested. Um, it has the capability of adding like prefix, prefixes and suffixes. And so what I did here is I, I made an underscore zero one, and we'll see what that means later on. That's actually gonna help us out and give us some additional options. But uh, I'm gonna minimize this, but looking at that particular assembly in native, that's what we're looking at here, is just a, a spring lamp assembly here. And, uh, and you can see the assembly structure over here. It's, it's pretty simple. But uh, as, you're, as we're working through this, you, you know, think about how complicated assemblies can get, and this could be thousands of parts. And so the same techniques that I'm gonna review with you today, you'll be able to apply to, to larger assemblies as well. And yeah, I think you'll see the benefit. Um, so anyways, you know, you know, again, we're working in native and now we're trying to make the transition to Team Center. So let me minimize that. And um, I've already got my Team Center session started here already to make things run a little smoother. So, and NX is up and running. So again, we've kind of reviewed the team center nuts and bolts here in the past. And uh, so I'm gonna just jump right into a session of NX integrated into team center. So I know that this is integrated because I can see my little team center navigator tab here, right? So that's kind of handy. And, and that kind of, as I'm working between both um, native and team center, that, that's kind of a, a big tip off there. And so, you know, I've set up some folders here. I've got an assembly folder. That I'm going to uh, import some data into. Uh, let's see, there's nothing contained in this folder at this moment, and that's what I'm going to be working with later here. So, uh, the thing, next thing I want to do is I want to jump into the import assembly into Team Center utility. And again, a little bit of a mis misnomer here. Again, I, we are working with an assembly today, but if you just want to import single parts, you would use the same utility as well. So. If you've used this in the past, you can you can see already that there's quite a bit of more information on this dialog box here. So again, they're you know Siemens is trying to make this a little more friendly, more user friendly to use, and kind of um, it can be overwhelming at times. You can see there's a lot of information out here. We're not going to use it all, but depending on your situation, you know it's going to make life a little bit easier for you. So uh, just kind of I'm going to briefly hit a couple highlights here as we're working down the dialog box here, but. First thing we're looking at is, you know, if you're if you know a team center, there's different items and item types inside a team center that you can designate. And so depending on what you're working with here, and there's a short list here. The out of the box is item, just general, and that's what we're working with today. Working our way down to the name and attribute conversion, you know, there's a there's a different options here as well. You can just do a, a part ID generator. So if you don't care what the part number is, you you can just let Team Center, when it's importing, pull the next number in the list. You know, whatever that number uh, scheme has been developed on your side um, from your administrator. Um, a lot of times, you know, you may want to maybe, you know, you've been working with these files and maybe you already have part numbers on your file, your operating system files already. For here, I, they're actually just names. So a lot of times people take the time or they have been working with an assigned part number 
and it's an operating system uh, level file name. So that's what I'm going to use today. And then there's a, again, there's different options here. And some of these are very, a lot of this stuff comes from the cloning tool that I mentioned earlier. So you'll see this, there's a lot of commonality here. You, you could add a, a suffix or prefix with the naming rule if you want to. So there's a lot of options here. Today, I'm just going to use as ID and revision. And so we'll see what that looks like. And then if there's a default name and default description, you can put that in as well. Um, in, include component parts. That's kind of handy as well, depending on, you know, you know, people develop their NX files differently. And so if there's a lot of relationships built, then you may want to use that. A lot of times I'll just uncheck that just to kind of streamline things and see what I get right away. Um, find component as saved. This is just like assembly load options. You want to, you know, I have mine as saved, but you could do it at from folder as well. Um, and so now we come into the area where it's parts to import. So now I can actually, I can import from a folder um, is one option a lot of people use, or I could do select parts or assemblies. So I'm going to do that right here. Later on, actually, I'm going to draw your attention to this right now is a select log file to set up import. That's what we're actually going to, I'm draw, drawing our attention to now, because actually that's going to be very handy to use later on and kind of the reason I'm, I'm showing this today. So let's go ahead and pick an assembly. So this is going to get me right to my assembly that I've been working with here. And so I know that this is the assembly file. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pick that. And it's already going to, it's going to load this into my dialog box here. So it's going to honor whatever I picked up here for the name and attribute conversion. So you can see this already. So item ID, right, is, is part, part number inside a team center. So it's actually just taking whatever we had at the operating system level and using that as the part number. That may be okay in our situation, but you know, we maybe have a, a list of part numbers that we want to apply to this before we send it in. And, and definitely it's handy if you can put the correct part number or item ID on these item on these operating system files before you import them, that's going to save you a little more work later on when it gets into Team Center. So uh, the other thing I want to draw your attention to, if I bring up uh, the folder that I was working in. Again, see how I have this underscore 01. So by putting the underscore 01 when I did my cloning and adding that as a suffix, you can see here we get a translation that happens. And I actually, it's putting in for my revision letter a 01. Um, that, that's actually pretty handy. I, I've used it many times. A lot of times, you know, maybe so, you know, we have some old legacy files, though, that maybe it isn't, that's not the correct revision. And maybe we want to take some time and kind of boil that down and make sure we got the correct revision on this particular uh, object or, or item before we import it into Team Center. And so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to modify a log file. It takes a little more time, but this actually is a, a lot more user friendly and it gives you kind of a little extra time to, to add and change things on the fly. Now, the default behavior is I could come in here and I can start, you know, renaming this thing. Maybe I wanted this thing to be, uh, you know, I wanted to put a, a little better name, spring bulb socket. And so, and that's actually the real name instead of having those underscores and that, and that kind of thing going on. I could go through and I can name all this stuff here. And, you know, again, this is a short list of, you know, I got 13 parts here. So it's not such a big deal, but you can imagine if, if you had a, a very large assembly, hundreds of not thousands of parts, you're going to want to, you know, you may not be able to rename all this stuff in a, in a given, you know, a couple, 30 minutes or a day, even, you know, you know, when we're doing our work, you know, we're in our work life, you know, we might get distracted and you get pulled off to a meeting and, and then all of a sudden, who knows, you come back and, I don't know, so, some update happened from Windows and it crashed NX for some reason or whatever. So now you've lost all your work. So what, what I'm gonna, what I'm proposing here is to actually just create a log file and then you can go through and kind of manually edit that log file when you have the time and then you can use the select log file to set up the import. So, um, might be a little confusing just talking about here, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this. So there's a couple things I wanna highlight in here. There's a long, kind of a lot of columns here to kind of digest here, but it's, it's giving you information and maybe it'll make a little more sense as time goes on here. Some little subtleties that I've been discovering 
you know, if, if I select the upper corner, this is kind of works like a spreadsheet. You know, if, if I made a mistake here or whatever, I can come down here, highlight everything and say reset attributes. And so now I'm, I'm getting in this situation where I can kind of go and pick and choose. You know, maybe I, I want to assign stuff here. I can double click in there. Or I can go right mouse click assign. And what it's doing is it's honoring this as, you know, this conversion rule here. You know, maybe I want to come through here. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and, and edit. And maybe I want to put in my own number. You know, and kind of and kind of pick through that, but I, maybe I don't want to change everything. So that's, again, that's another scenario. I just wanted to show you that functionality if you're kind of working with this and trying to figure out how to use this dialog box. Again, I'm going to go ahead and, and reset again, and then I'm just going to go ahead and assign all. So just a right mouse click in that little gray space area here, and now I'm getting getting all that information populated. So. Um, just a couple little more things here. I'm going to, I may want to set my destination folder right off the bat here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down into this. Oh, my home folder. I'm doing import test. I've got this assembly one folder I've created. And then there's an output log file. Now this is very important here. So I, here I'm going to, I'm already looking into kind of where all, all my NX assembly files are just to kind of organize things. I'm just going to call this import one. There we go. And none of this stuff matters at this point in time. Now, the one thing I do want to do to generate this log file, I'm going to click a dry run here. So once I click dry run, it creates that log file that we're talking about. I get you know same exact information is populated in this information window. At this point in time, I'm actually done. Just to, we're going to open up the, the log file in a text editor, and then I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So at this point, you know, I'm done with this. I, what I ended up doing is I essentially created this log file with all the parts, and now I can go back and I can cancel out of this. And then I'll, now I'm in that situation I was discussing where, you know, you can kind of just take your time as the day goes on or and modify some of this information. Now, one of the big more important things I I want to designate or basically talk about, there's a, there's a little switch here that's not really in, in a lot of the documentation, but it's an old cloning switch here. So uh, actually, so use existing is what we want to have there for the cloning action. But for this, this is not in the drop dog di down dialog box that you see there. There's this switch user underscore name, which basically what we're telling the, uh, the import utility is that we want it to, to, to pull the information from the information that we're going to change here in this log file. So as I'm as I'm going down through this list here, I can see you know it's telling me you know where the file is located in that in the operating system file location, but it's also let's see here, yeah it's giving me all the information that I need to make changes here. So let me exit out of this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and load this up in text editor again. Cloning assembly. Am I, am I looking at this right here? Let's see. Yeah, I think this is part specific information. X log. Okay. So we got my part file, my cloning name. No, something's not working quite right there. Let me let me go back in here. Let's go import. I'm going to go through these same steps again here. All I need to do is grab my assembly. There we go. So same kind of thing, except a lot more or less talking here. Let's see if we can do this again. 
use existing. The only thing I need to do is pick my import folder. There we go. Yeah, operating system, that, that's all good. Output log file. Let's do that. We'll just overwrite that, yes. And we'll click our run log file. There we go. That's what I want to see. I think since I made some changes, and resetting some of the files, it didn't populate all the information I wanted in the log file. So yeah, that's why we do these on the fly blogs here. So uh, kind of real life situation. So let's go ahead and exit out of that, cancel out of that. Go ahead and open up our log file here. Reload, here we go. So now you can see there's more information in here for each of the parts. So that's what I'm getting at here. So again, we'll come back in here, put username, which is the most important thing in this log file that I wanted to direct your attention at, because that once we import the log file, it's gonna use all the information that we change in this, uh, in this area here. So I'm just gonna make a few changes in here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So the first one that comes up in this list is the spring shade bracket underscore zero one is again, there's the operating system location for it. So when I when it gets in the team center, I may not want that to be the part number, right? So here, just to kind of uh, translate some of this stuff, it says at DB back forward slash, and then this is the actual part number or item ID that you want it to be. So maybe we have, again, this is my part numbering system, zero, zero, one, and then the zero, want forward slash zero one as the revision. So maybe I don't want, maybe I want it to be a revision A at that point. So that's, I'm gonna put in for that. And then uh, let's see here, the exact name is is gonna be, yeah, I want it to be, maybe I'm gonna delete that. This is something that was, came from another system. Maybe I wanna capitalize that. And so something very important in here, if you're gonna have spaces in between your names, you're gonna to wanna to put the quotation marks around it so, it so the utility can populate that. Otherwise, you'll get an error message. Now, for the description, you can put a longer description in there. I'm not gonna have anything, but you still need to put the quotation mark so it can pick that up. So again, this, again, this came in, you know, at, Natively, I was using a different part number, and now I'm at this one. I'm sending the team center. Maybe I now I know my part numbers, and now I'm going to add that part number. And so again, just kind of working down the list here. You know, I'll do another one. Maybe this one's going to be. A. One thousand dash zero zero two and. Uh, Maybe this is coming in at revision B for some reason. Maybe this was already released in another system, an old legacy system, and it's revision B. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna change that. So again, coming down here, the actual name. So I, I want to name that. Let's see, spring shade mount. And again, let's not forget about my quotations around there. So as you can see, you know, this is something I can kind of do on, on my own time. I don't have to be in the system, you know, like, again, just considering this being a very large assembly and, you know, taking the time to, to kind of do it sporadically. And maybe, you know, maybe you don't have all the part numbers at this point, you're, you know, you're wait, you need to wait a couple of days, but now you can start working down through this list and uh, pre-populating all this before you send in the team center. So, uh, yeah, I think I've got all my information there. Just now, again, I just want to show, I could go down this whole list and make all the changes, but, now you'll see once we import this log file back into the import utility, let's see what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and save there, minimize that. And now in my, I'm in my team center session here. I'm gonna go import assembly. And now instead of going and picking through all this stuff, I'm gonna go and pick the log file that I was just working with. And now let's see what we get. All right, so now you can see 
if we open this up, the two items that I changed actually have a revision, the A and B next to them, like I made modifications in that log file. So, and then I've got the correct item IDs or part numbers before I send them in. So, so that's a kind of, uh, that's a nice way of, of kind of working with your files. You know, again, you may think this is maybe a little tedious, but you know, a lot of times once you get data into Team Center, it's a little more challenging sometimes to make some of these modifications where if you know a lot of this stuff up front, you can kind of, you know, you know, it's all, when you're importing data, you want to make sure your data is clean as possible and you've got as much information on there as you know about before you send it in. So now at this point, uh, I can go validate Team Center information. So again, I'll get some more information that's on this list here in the columns. Here it's just going to tell me that all this information, these are new items that I'm sending into Team Center. So I can also do another dry run. And then again, the same information like I saw in my previous log file. And now we can go ahead and click the OK button. Once everything looks good and you know we're not getting any error messages, we're going to go ahead and say, OK, let's import this into Team Center. So it takes a few seconds here. This uh, I've got 13 parts in this assembly, but uh, but the I guess the reason I wanted to share this information with you today is just like you know you know importing data into Team Center can be very time consuming, but I think this is a good technique for for basically working with the data, taking you know importing creating this log file, taking it offline, and working with it on your own time, and then coming back into the system when you're ready to import it, you know do a couple of more dry runs and test and just make sure all that data is clean and, and free of errors, and now. If we come back into Team Center, you can see here's all of our information populated now and uh, into my assembly file. And now you can see, now this makes a little more sense. I've got an actual part number here. I've got the revision, the correct revision letter attached to it. Um, let's see, here's my spring mount the shade that I changed in that log file. And here's my part number and associated revision related to it. So now I can come in here I can find my assembly. Again, if you're working with Teams, you know, as soon as I see this uh, bomb view revision, I know that's an assembly file, so I can single click on that. Let's send that to NX. And minimize this. And now here I am, I'm looking at my, my lamp my spring lamp assembly, and now it's actually inside of Team Center, and I'm able to, to manage this, and now start rolling the revision of different uh, re revisions here. You see, now you can see, now this makes a little more sense, and this is how you wanna make things look look like inside of Team Center. We've got the revision A and the re revision column here. But even so, like again, you know, that cloning operation I did, you know, before the log, I actually created this revision. So at least it gives you something to work with, and it's not just, you know, you have a little more control in the system. So. Again, uh, um, just another little tidbit here to kind of make life a little bit easier. For hopefully, uh, this is uh, will be useful for you down the road. Appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for attending or, or checking out another blog. Again, my name is Brian Garcia with Acuity Solutions, and and thanks for uh, uh, coming along for the ride today. Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next session. Take care, everybody.